What's up everyone? Welcome back for another exciting Art of War video. I'm John Lennon here with the High Marshal of the Jack Templars himself. That's right, it says so on the back of some of my shirts. Mm -hmm. We're ready for this one. We're going to be talking all about Black Templars, the, one of Jack's favorite chapters, Space Marines, all That's in this right. video. That's right, the most devout. They have uh, no tolerance for any shenaniganry. That's, Absolutely that's, not. That's one of their defining characteristics. I think I think witches are, are mentioned somewhere, right? Zero tolerance. I believe witches are a form of shenaniganry. Ah, yes. Well, that's unacceptable for the Black Templars. Everyone yes. knows that. Two favorite armies: uh, armies that have a lot of psychers and armies that really don't like that. Well, there we go. I'm not here for any armies that have, you know, lukewarm opinions on psychers. There we go. So in this video, we're going to be talking about everything Black Templars. This is a good introductory spot. So if you're thinking about playing with Black Templars for the first time, or maybe against them, this is a great thing to watch if you want to learn all about them. As always, uh, your support on this channel is what helps us do what we do. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't clicked that like button, maybe even a subscribe button, make sure you click those buttons. Like, share, subscribe, all those buzzwords. And check out the description below this video to see more information about the Art of War War Room. Absolutely. Well, uh, let's get started, shall we? Let's do it. You know, you, you can't wait too long when it's talk about Black Templars. You don't want to be no. Black don't Templars, be do not wait. That guy over <laughs> your shoulder, he will have words with you about oh, that. Oh, the Empress champion himself. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's talk about Black Templars. Absolutely. So their trait is Righteous Zeal. They reroll advance and charge rolls, which, trust me, I thought that wasn't a big deal myself. And then I played games with them, and oh boy, it comes up constantly. The re-rolling advance when your entire army moves up uh, is huge because you don't mm -hmm. need to re, you know, your army just moves faster because those ones and twos on the advance rolls just get re-rolled. You don't need to spend CP to re-roll charges. You don't ever get caught out of like, oh, I re-rolled a charge over here and I failed one over here. It sucks. Char Combat armies love re-rolling charges. Orcs get it, Black Templars get it. It's just yep. a great quality of life. Uh, thing and they ignore mortal wounds on a five plus, which is great oh. when you're an army as elite as Black Templars. Uh, I mean, Black Templars have more models than most Space Marine armies, but still a Space Marine army. Yeah, they have a lot of guys. If you're paying points for a save, you want to take that save as often as possible. Meaning things that ignore your saves, you want to ignore those things. <laughs> That's right. I have contempt for things that have contempt for armor of contempt. <laughs> there we go. Let's talk about their play style. Black Templars are generally an aggressive army. They're good at board control. They have a lot of good durable large melee units and some melee tricks that help them control the board and pressure the opponent's primary objectives. They're great at playing the primary uh, and they're a pretty good combat army for Space Marines. They absolutely are. They can make several units in their army really durable. Mm -hmm. They have uh, litanies that can make you durable. They have upgrades that can make you durable and yeah. they just generally make really good use of the those those tanky like infantry units. Absolutely. In yeah, a good combination of vows, relics, chants, litanies, etc. makes Black Templar's infantry just a little more durable than a normal Space Marine. And a normal Space Marine is not exactly fragile. That's so true. Just stacking more rules on top of that, making them tougher than they were before, always a good thing for Templars. Yep. Uh, Black Templars only have a couple special characters, but they're pretty much all bangers. Uh, Helbrecht yep. and Grimaldus are phenomenal units, and mm -hmm. most Space Marine armies would take them if they could. Um, yeah, absolutely. You can have some really good named characters in Black Templars, and then uh, the unique abilities and stratagems they get as well are pretty strong. Absolutely. But like all armies, Black mm -hmm. Templars have their weaknesses. Uh, they don't have the speed of like Blood Angels and White Scars and even Space Wolves sometimes, of other melee-focused Space Marine armies. Uh, they, they just don't. They're a little slower, but a little more durable on that end. And because they're slower, they can't really hop from terrain piece to terrain piece as well, and they're vulnerable to just getting shot over and over again. Absolutely. Being a little bit tougher helps you get shot if you get shot the same amount of times. But it's not great if you get shot more than normal. So yeah. you do want to make sure to avoid uh, running straight into a gun line, even if you're a little tougher than an average base marine. That's right. All right. 
So, Black Templar's super doctrine. Mm -hmm. So, like, Blood Angels will get uh, the army-wide extra attack. White Scars get the army-wide extra damage. Yep. Black Templars get Templar Vows that do not key off of the doctrines in any yep. way. So they still get their doctrines, but these Templar Vows that they get, they get for the entire game rather than in Assault Doctrine or in Tactical Doctrine. Kind of unique among the Space Marine chapters. That's true. So you're going to, at the start of the game, you swear a vow, and it's one of these four. Mm -hmm. You don't have to if you don't want to, um, but, you know, usually you are never not to. sworn a vow. I've, I've thought about it a couple times. Really? I feel like a devout Black Templar player is always going to be swearing vows. Well, I swore a vow to just uh, slap my opponent in the face with oh. my units. Well, there's probably a pretty big downside for that one. If you know. Oh, there wasn't, trust me. <laughs> <gasps> but you can't. Generally, you will want to. Um, they do have. They apply to your entire army, and they have some pretty good effects. So, suffer not the unclean to live uh, has hit rolls of six auto wound non vehicles, mm -hmm. so, which is really good. But only against non vehicles. Uh, I wish this was against everything. If so, it would be like a pretty solid contender to the next one. But mm -hmm. as it is. It's it's not bad. Yeah, but because you have to choose a game to game, if you see a lot of monsters, it'd be very valuable. Exactly. Um, now the the drawback of that is you must also charge the closest enemy unit when you charge. Mm -hmm. uh, it says when you charge, you must also declare the closest enemy unit. This is not even that really like not even really a downside. You almost always want to include the closest unit when you charge. There's some corner cases where you don't, but generally you do, mm -hmm. and it doesn't force you to charge if you don't want to. Yep. It's just when you declare a charge, the closest unit has to be part of that charge as well. Fair enough. Well, the next one is Uphold the Honor of the Emperor. My favorite name, personally. Oh, yeah, and it's, uh, it's, it's a winner. people's favorite one. Indeed. So every unit in your army gains a 5-up and vulnerable save, and they cannot be wounded on an unmodified 1 or 2. So you, it's kind of like a baby transhuman is what we always call that. Mm -hmm. Baby transhuman is where, you know, it's not quite full transhuman, but it's army-wide. And that 5-up invuln is awesome. Again, that's just one of the ways to add a little bit of durability to every unit in the army, especially vehicles and non-core units that normally don't receive buffs. They still get this, so you're always getting a save, and there's always that chance that your opponent fails to wound you. Just uh, helps, helps make it hard for your opponent to kill Space Marines in mass. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the downside is particularly steep because the upside is yes. particularly great. Uh, mm -hmm. Your army cannot receive cover, and Templars are amazing with their infantry, which would ordinarily just be getting plus one to their armor save. Mm -hmm. uh, with Armor of Contempt coming out, there is a solid argument to not take this and instead take something like Suffer Not the Unclean, um, because stacking cover with Armor of Contempt, with good armor saves, is is a solid way to <laughs> stay alive. Yeah, really. Um, so you really want to evaluate this game to game. If you're up against an Eldar army that ignores cover, if you're up against, you know, Necrons where mm -hmm. they only generally have one shooting unit and that shooting unit will just spend one CP to ignore your cover anyway, then there's not much uh, to be gained from, from the cover save you would be losing, so you take up mm -hmm. both the honor. It's definitely a good one that benefits uh, from being able to switch your vows. Yeah, absolutely. And then the next one here is Abhor the Witch, Destroy the Witch. Again, we mentioned they don't really like witches that they, much. They do not. Uh, so this one, this one's very interesting. Uh, you will, I think you can only take it if your opponent has a psychic unit in their army. I believe so, yes. And uh, they gain a three-inch move pre-game, and they reroll wound rolls of one against psychers. So if your opponent has a psyker, you can give your entire army a three-inch scout move. Um, just Well, it actually just adds three inches to their oh, move okay. characteristic on the first turn. Okay. So yes. it just gets, goes, goes a little bit faster. Yes. Yeah but they cannot perform any actions while they're within 18 inches of a Psyker. So if there's a Psyker nearby, you need to put all of your effort into destroying that witch. That is that is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, alternatively, you just you know do banners turn one while the Psyker's not within 18 inches of you. Yep. Or if the Psyker dares come within 18, they die, and then the actions will find themselves being done on the following turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it'll be okay. Yeah. Uh, accept any challenge, no matter the odds, is uh, your army will always benefit from Assault Doctrine and uh, counts as having Shock Assault active all the time, whether it charges or whether mm -hmm. it doesn't. Now, this is a decent, decent upgrade to your army. Uh, it just helps you in protracted combats, which your more durable army will be better at getting to. But it comes with an incredibly steep downside. Your army may not, nobody in your army may fall back, ever. I mean, Not even once. If I'm in glorious combat with an enemy of the Imperium, I feel like I want to stay there and hit them with my chainsword. Yeah, yeah, you would think that. You would. And being a combat army, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people who think, 
That's no issue. Why would I need to fall back? I'm the combat army here. Well, the, the thing is your opponent may force a scenario where one corner of the board you're not able to get to in combat and you have to deal with it in shooting, but you can't fall back. Uh, your opponent might overwhelm one portion of your army and the rest of it not in position to help out. You must fall back. Well, guess what? You can't do that. Yeah. Um, something like not being able to fall back is very risky even for armies that think themselves immune to it. Yeah, and the strengths of this one are pretty high. That plus one attack that you always get, you know, it doesn't stack with Shock Assault, but you're always plus one attack instead of on the charge. Uh, that's great, but not being able to fall back is a pretty big downside. Yeah, there's plenty of times when your opponent might be able to put a combat unit that's particularly good uh, mm -hmm. against your offensive profiles, and you would just fall back from it, so to not give it the ability to fight on your turn as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but with this, you're not able to, so they will get to hit you on their turn. You hit them, maybe you're not that good, and then maybe it's an Eldar Avatar or something with a five of Feel No Pain, and your chain swords just aren't cutting it. Yep. it. But you would fall back, let give them only a couple of turns to fight, but you'd give them your turn and their turn if you're not able to fall yeah, back. Yeah, so pretty something. big downside there, but lots of good upsides to consider as well. Absolutely. Choose wisely. All right. All right. Uh, Black Templars have some excellent stratagems. Yeah, they do. Mostly in the utility category, but mm -hmm. some in offensive as well. Yeah. Uh, Exemplars of the Crusade just gives a Sword Brethren unit uh, extra hits of six, on sixes to hit in combat. Mm -hmm. Just really helps them hit harder. Sword Brethren already hit pretty hard. Uh, they're just, they've just got good melee profiles. Yeah. And one CP exploding sixes to hit, just solid. Yeah. And I feel like we should mention that, uh, don't worry, Black Templar players, you also get all of the stratagems in the Space Marine Codex. So if you don't see many defensive stratagems here, that's okay. There are plenty in the Space Marine Codex, and those are the ones you're going to want to use. Absolutely. Uh, next up is Heretic's Pyre. Mm -hmm. uh, a unit's flame weapons gain extra hit against large units. Uh, it functionally gives them the same rules as Blast, where if they have yeah. 6 to 10 models in their unit, you are minimum 3. And if they have more than 10, you are you maximize your shots. Mm -hmm. Although you can shoot into combat if you have a mechanic to do so. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Well, they have pyre pistols. There you go. There you go. This is an expensive stratagem, but when you spot a big unit and you don't want to anymore, boy, howdy, is it there for you. Yeah, it's really good value when it comes up, even if it doesn't come up that often. But with the pyre blasters getting a lot cheaper in the latest Minotaur Field Guide, you're a lot more likely to see those on Crusader squads. That's right, that's right. All right, let's talk about some of these utility stratagems. Let's start off with Devout Push, a classic mainstay of the Black Templars. Uh, and that is that a unit can make a three inch normal move or pile in uh, at the beginning of the fight phase. Yes, so there are a lot of restrictions on this. Mm -hmm. uh, it works in a very weird way. If you do the pile in, it's just a pile in. Sounds good. Yep, if you're in combat. If you you're in combat, you must do, be in combat to do the pile in, unlike last codex. But Bye. if you are out of combat, you can make a three inch normal move. Now, some restrictions on that. Mm -hmm. You are not able to get into a transport. Nope. You must move either towards the closest enemy unit or closest objective. But the way it's worded means you get to choose whether you want it to be the closest enemy unit or the closest objective. Yep. So there can be an enemy unit 24 inches away and an objective two inches away. But if you choose you want to move towards the closest enemy unit, you move towards the enemy unit. Mm -hmm. And if you want to move towards the objective, you move closer to the objective. There's a lot of ways to gain this. A shooting unit steps out from behind a wall, shoots, and then walks back towards an objective that's behind it. Yep. Excellent. Uh, a unit moves three inches and then moves normally and then charges. Plus three inch move, plus three to your charge functionally, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Uh, pile in also means you can stretch out your unit, and then if your opponent tries to tag just one little part of it, guess what? They pile in, and then they pile in again, then they fight. Yes. Seems quite good. Yes, you can get a lot of movement out of it. It's a really good stratagem, and uh, just being able to move a little bit of extra models onto objectives or do some weird combat tricks, very valuable for Black Templars who see themselves as a board control combat army. This helps them with board control, and it helps them with combat. Yes. Yes, and uh, if you charge your opponent, you can then pile in, and then when you activate, you can pile in again to get really deep yep. into your opponent's side of the board. Very strong. All right, next up is Abhor the Witch. When your opponent casts a spell within 24 inches of you, spend a command point, roll a dice. On a 4+, plus, you deny it. Yeah, just solid. When your opponent has a linchpin spell mm -hmm. that they want to go off, well, guess what? Half the time, that linchpin is going to fall out. Yeah, it's... Uh, 
it's a real simple stratagem. You see it a lot in different books, but it's always really solid because it, uh, it makes your opponent be very careful with their witches, which they should be around Black Templars. They really should be. Really you should walk be. right up to Black Templars, you're going to get a beaten name. There we go. All right. Then there's For the Emperor's Honor, an enemy character engaged with one of your characters must fight that character and not anything else. Yeah. So this is a weaker version of Angel's Sacrifice out of Blood Angels, but it's their <laughs> best stratagem. So as one of your utilities, it's perfectly fine that you have a weaker version of their best. Mm -hmm. um, it's just very strong if your opponent has a really good uh, character that's going to put a beating yeah. on your units. It's like Mortarian. Something like Mortarian is a great example. Uh, something like a character knight. You charge it with multiple units. They want to interrupt uh, with the counteroffensive stratagem. And you pay the CP, and they must fight, you know, an apothecary or something instead of the unit of blade guard that they wanted to pick off the board. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Uh, it doesn't come up that often, but when it does, you just get to stop them from hitting you with a character. It's really strong. Absolutely. Next up is Tenacious Assault. This is one of my favorite items for Black Templars. Uh, when an opponent that doesn't have the fly keyword tries to fall back from you, spend this command point, roll a dice on a 4+, plus, they do not fall back, and they have to stay with you. Remember how we talked about how bad it was when you want to fall back and you can't, back in some of those vows? Think of how good it is if your opponent wants to fall back and they can't. Yeah, especially you are the combat army, so mm -hmm. it, it is a little worse for them than it is for you. Yeah, you usually don't mind getting stuck in, especially in your opponent's turn. Yes, yes, yes. It is, it is better for you generally if your opponent doesn't fall back. Mm -hmm. uh, strength of Conviction. This is actually probably the strongest one in the book this for really being good. so um, under the radar. Yeah. A, uh, a core unit just gains objective secured. Mm -hmm. Boom. Just That's it. That's all it does, but that is very strong. You, and, yeah. You, oh. Pick a core unit, and um, that can be in your command phase when they're trying to take your objectives away. That can be uh, so you get to keep your objective, and then you go and take your opponent's objective. Mm -hmm. Very strong. It really makes any kind of fast, missile units really good, like uh, attack bikes or um, eliminators. I really like their ability to move twice uh, fair. and uh, either charge or advance and just get onto your opponent's objectives. Yeah, and the best part about this, in my mind, is that you activate it in your command phase, and you score your primary objectives at the end of your command exactly. phase. Exactly. Which means that if your opponent tries to contest an objective, they put some obsec on and you don't have any, go ahead and spend that command point. Now you both have objectives secured, and it comes down to models. And if you even needed to, you could devout push in their fight phase to get a couple extra models on, because you can do the math in advance. Lots of really good potential with strength of, strength of conviction combined with devout push to get a lot of good board control tricks on your infantry. Absolutely. All right. You got some Warlord Traits, Relics, and Litanies, because Black Templars have mm -hmm. their own uh, unique Chaplain Litanies. All right, so Warlord Traits got Inspirational Fighter. I really like this one. It's just all nearby units, uh, sixes to wound or an additional point of AP, and it does stack with Assault Doctrine. Excellent. Yeah, it really helps those chain swords hit harder than, uh, than their AP1 would suggest. You know, if you're if you're an army that has a lot of chain swords, AP one can be a real sticking point. Mm -hmm. You know, if you run into like creations of bile, or you run into blood angels, yeah. or something Any like that. Any of these that. army of contempt armies that AP one is no longer quite as good. Getting into AP two is now like, all right, I am getting value out yep. of this. It's a and, whole different category. And then the AP two goes to AP three with assault doctrine. Now it's on sixes to wound, but you know that that does just help bump the numbers up a little bit. Absolutely. All right, we got Frontline Commander. The Warlord gets plus one to advance and charge, and nearby core units get plus one, or not nearby core, just any core units receive plus one to charge the enemies that are within one inch of your Warlord. Yep. Uh, this is Helbrecht's native Warlord trait, uh, and it really does help just get your army up the board faster. Yeah, because you've got all your reroll charges, anytime you make a charge more likely, and then you get to reroll it, you actually really start getting places. So the Warlord's more likely to get into combat that's good on a combat bruiser like Helbricht. Once he gets in, all of his buddies are like, whoa, the boss is getting stuck in, we should go join him. And then they're getting plus one to charge rear old charges. It can help you kind of hit like a black wave yes. where you know a whole bunch of power armor guys all at once all hit something, gets ground to dust, and they just all keep moving forward. That's right, that's right. Black Templars is about securing that first charge because mm -hmm. then you get a whole bunch of movement off the charge move, the pile in, the consolidate. Uh, especially if you want to do two pylons, yep. uh, you know, in any way. But 
getting that first charge is the most important part, and so Frontline Commander really helps with that. Absolutely. Uh, little bit hurt by the fact that uh, Canticle of Hate, or Litany of Hate, mm -hmm. whichever Canticle one, of hate. Canticle of Hate, yep. the one that gives you plus two to charges, and then plus three inch piles in, pile in and consolidates, doesn't stack with this, so you don't get to go plus three to charge. And you generally want to take Canticle of Hate, I've found. Mm -hmm. It's, it's pretty good. solid, yeah. It's very good. Uh, Oathkeeper, Warlord Heroically intervenes six inches. Very solid, on, yeah. especially on like a Judiciary or something like that, or a uh, Company Champion. You can't take a Chapter Champion in Black Templars. Mm -hmm. um, this, I believe, is the Emperor's Champion Warlord trait. Pretty good on something like that, yeah. where you just, you just get in there and it's hard to prevent you from interacting with those combats. I think the Judiciary is really the one yeah, that benefits most one from there. this. Get into combat, make them fight last, you fight first, kill them, they don't get to do anything except cry and when you win the game. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. Let's talk about some of these relics. Let's start off with the Ancient Breviary. I never leave home without the Ancient Breviary on my Black Templar's Chaplains. Uh, the Ancient Breviary lets a Chaplain roll two dice and pick one every time they do a chant. Normally a chant passes on a three plus. Uh, so, you know, two thirds of the time you pass it. That's good, but it's not very reliable. No. With the Ancient Bre Breviary, you roll two dice. And if either one of them is a three up, that's probably the one you're going to choose. So now you have uh, about an 88% chance of passing. Something like that. Yeah, eight, it's, in it's nine. eight nine. So you're, you're getting right up there with this is happening almost every turn. You can actually rely on it. This could be combined with the, uh, the generic Space Green Warlord trait to get a uh, casting on a two plus for this chance. That would just be ludic just ludicrous odds of passing. In but my, sometimes yeah. it needs to happen. In my mind, that's a little too, too much too. investment in it. Mm -hmm. um, Ancient Breviary is, it, it's better than Wise Orator, which is when you want your chance to go off, you take Wise Orator, that's plus one to your chant rolls. Mm -hmm. Ancient Breviary, that Wise Orator is five out of six times you pass it. Yep. Ancient Breviary is eight out of nine times you pass it. It's even better. Very solid relic. All right. Next up is the Aurelian Shroud. This is another staple relic of Black Templars, one that really helps them with their durability. So you pop this relic once per game, but when you do, all nearby infantry get a four plus invulnerable save. Yes, and it has a very interesting timing on when you pop mm -hmm. it. It's either at the start of the battle round or at the start of your command phase. Yes. So if you end up going second and your opponent is going to hit you real hard, and you know this, you can pop it in response to that. Yep, you can pop it right away. Alternatively, you wait until a turn where you think you're going to force your opponent to deal with you or they lose the game, and you pop it then, and it really helps your army's durability like a lot. Yeah. And this is just all nearby infantry. It's not core locked, right? It's just infantry? It's nearby infantry. Okay. So it helps in, It helps characters. It helps yep. uh, non-core units like Centurions. Just getting a 4-up invuln once per game, really solid defense. Most Space Marines don't have access to that. Yeah, very solid. Next up, Tannhauser's Bones. All damage is damage one against the bear. Is it a rail gun? Sorry, it looks like a las gun to me. <laughs> um, all damage one. All damage becomes damage one. So it means that if you have a lot of wounds on some characters, like uh, Primaris Chaplain on a bike, mm -hmm. seven wounds, potentially more, this, uh, this makes them very difficult to get rid of. Ordinarily, damage three, damage two is the way you want to kill that guy, not damage one. But guess what? That Drazar is looking an awful lot like damage one to me, and they're going to have some difficulty killing you. Yeah, really good defensive relic on a chaplain that you're trying to keep alive. Uh, it does kind of conflict with Ancient Breviary on that one, but still, it's a really good defense. So uh, you like having those options. You know, you already lean into toughness a little bit with Black Templars. You might as well have another tool that you can put on your characters, especially one that may want to uh, tell an enemy character that they only have to swing on him. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that uh, Mortarian, D3 plus 3, no, 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 no. Still no. looks like one. Still looks like one to me. And I've found a lot of the time that Black Templars want to take two chaplains. Mm -hmm. So you'll take one with, uh, you know, they, they can no two chant to and use the Ancient Bravery on him. And then potentially one on a bike with Tannhauser's Bones or potentially a captain or something like that. Yeah, very Just solid. A great, de one of the better defensive relics in Space Marines, honestly. Absolutely. All right, let's talk about the Litanies of the Devout. This is the special table of uh, chaplain chants that Black Templars have access to. Most chapters have a custom librarian discipline. Black Templars do not. Is that they witchery, not... I hear? Uh, no, I assure you, no witchery to be found here. Instead, their chaplains have access to either table, but you've got to choose a table. You can't mix and match. You do, yes. Uh, whatever chaplain you take, just choose which table they want, but you've got to stick to it. You've got to stick to it, which is... 
totally fine because Litanies of the Devout are very strong. Yeah, they, they, are, they are good options in both camps here. That's right. Starting off with Litany of Divine Protection, almost certainly the best one. You pick mm -hmm. a unit and it ignores wounds on a 5 plus. Yeah. 5 of Feel No Pain. Yeah. Just, yeah. And this is like only one word off of like their chapter tactic, but uh, boy, removing that mortal, that's, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. Most damage, I know it feels like most of the damage in the game comes from mortal wounds, but boy, is that not the case. Yep. And being able to ignore wounds on a 5 plus, especially with multi wound models, really, really, really annoying for any yeah, damage. Yeah, super good. Uh, I just pick a unit, make it more durable. That's a win in my book. The amount of times I've seen Nick on a two wound model with a five up feel no pain take three damage two and fail one, pass both, fail one, and I'm just like, what, what's happening to my damage? Uh, it just disappears into black hole. It's just black hole of damage. Zoop! Yeah. Next is the Psalm of Remorseless Persecution. This is a good damage buff. The unit that you target gets a, the ability that sixes to wound grant a mortal in addition to normal damage. Yes. Now, without access to psychers, Black Templars don't have a ton of mortal wound output, but using this champ, suddenly they do again. Yes, and uh, it's capped at six mortal wounds, but note, it's not capped at six mortal wounds per friendly unit. It's capped at six mortal wounds per enemy unit. So if you have a big brick of Primaris Crusaders mm -hmm. swinging in every direction, their hands are rated E for everyone, uh, each enemy unit can take up to six mortal wounds from this. Chart. Yeah, so you can get a lot of mortal wounds out of this still. It's a great damage buff, just especially to a volume of attacks. If you're going to be rolling a bunch of dice, some of them are going to be sixes, even if it doesn't feel that way. Yep. Uh, just toss a couple mortals in. Yep. Inspirational Fighter and Psalm of Remorseless Persecution really help make the chain swords that Black Templar's combat is kind of made out of mm -hmm. hit way harder than other chain swords. Yeah, now Black Templar chain swords are different. <laughs> they, they are just built different. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then there's Fires of Devotion, one of my uh, one of my favorites. It's mm -hmm. the third most powerful out of the Litanies of the Devout, so you see it a little less often. Still but, good. Still good. You yeah. just pick a unit, they get plus one attack. Yeah, I mean, we already talked about how Black Templars like doing a volume. They like big units. On a 14-man unit, Fires of Devotion is plus 14 attacks. That that adds up real quick. Certainly does. Certainly does. Especially if you stack with Psalm of Remorseless Persecution. And mm -hmm. Yeah, just start stacking all these combos and yeah. get more dice, more attacks, more swings, rerolls. It, yeah, it's all good. You really get there. You really get there. All right. So then we got Relic Bearers, which mm -hmm. is. Um, this is like the unique points upgrade system that uh, the Black Templars have access to? It is. Whereas Blood Angels got Fury of the Lost or whatever, where I guess if you want, you can make a captain terrible. Uh, <laughs> Black Templars got Relic Bearers. And this is very good. If your army includes a chaplain, which it should, if it isn't, hold your hand out. I'm going to slap it right now. Uh, if it includes a chaplain, you can pay points to give units relics that a model in that unit carries. It doesn't have to be your sergeant, but it can. Sigismund's Seal uh, lets you pick a unit at the start of the game that the bearer's unit rerolls wounds against in melee. Pretty strong. It's pretty good, yeah. Pretty, pretty good. If you have a big unit, you can just be like, hey, your big unit? Needs to stay away from my big unit. Yeah. My big unit has a hate on for that guy. Dead. <laughs> yeah, really solid. Next up is the Holy Orb, where uh, once a game in the shooting phase, not when you shoot, just in the shooting phase, uh, pick a nearby unit. They can take a couple mortals, and they fight last. That fight last is a big, big deal. Yes. You're a combat army. Against other combat armies, who swings first matters a lot. Who yes. interrupts who matters a lot. And the Holy Orb doesn't have to hit. It just... Makes them fight last. Just makes them fight last. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's once a game, but making an enemy unit fight last once a game is probably all you need. Yeah. Prevents interrupts. So the way it works, basically, is you there's two enemy units. You want to kill them both, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you can't do that because if you charge both, one of them is going to do the count 2 CP counter offensive, and you're going to kill one, they're going to kill one, and then in their turn, their one is going to kill your one, and you've lost. That is bad. How about we avoid that? How about we make one of them ineligible to fight until all enemies, until all eligible units have fought? So you charge both, you make one of them fight last, the other one is where you start, and you kill them. Then, oh, can't interrupt anymore, and you kill them too. <laughs> and now you have two, to there's zero. And that is good. That's yeah. math. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, it's got some good uh, defensive ones coming up here as well. With the Crux Obsidian, uh, enemies are minus one damage against the bearer. And I should mention that it's not the bearer's unit, it's just the guy. Just the guy with that relic. But there's a specific situation we'll talk about in the army list where you can put the Crux Obsidian on a sergeant who may or may not have a, an extra wound, and then he's really durable sometimes. 
Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go into that, but uh, you can make one dude in a unit really annoying to deal with, and, and guess what? You can resurrect him with Combat Revival. That's pretty good. It's pretty strong. The pretty Fist strong. of Balthus is uh, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a Power Fist that's damage three. Yep, damage three Power Fist. I don't believe it's minus one to hit with, which mm -hmm. is pretty strong, it might be. I, uh, I forget, but it's just, it just hits hard. Yep, just, just hits hard. Take a Power Fist, make it better. Sounds fine to me. Yep. Uh, Icon of Heinemann. Uh, the bear reduces just the bear again, not the mm -hmm. bear's unit, just the bear. Reduces AP 1 and 2 to 0. This is at its best on units that have a 2 up save, because mm -hmm. then AP 1 and 2 just gives you a 2 up. And because of Armor of Contempt not stacking with anything else that reduces AP, yep. you want it on something that has, say, Storm Shields and otherwise would not benefit from Armor of Contempt. So Icon of Heinemann, in my mind, pretty much only goes on Blade Guard. Yeah, it is great for Blade Guard, and it makes Blade Guard quite powerful in a world where Armor of Contempt has kind of left them in the dust. Yes. But in Black Templars with the Icon of Heinemann, they kind of get like a pseudo Armor of Contempt on the Sergeant, because if they hit you with the AP3, which you're not reducing, that was going to take you to an invuln, even if you had Armor of Contempt. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. So just like he, with the Icon of Hyman, you get like a slightly better Armor of Contempt on the Sergeant. Yep. And it's this, good one, AP2. this one you almost certainly want to not put on the Sergeant. That's true. Because it's a guy dedicated to taking damage. So you put it on just some random Joe, who is the first one to catch any uh, auto cannons headed your way. <laughs> exactly. And uh, that's, that, that's kind of his job. Hey? Yeah. Finally, you've got the Bones of Mordred. This one gives the bear the ability where when they roll a six to wound, they do a mortal. Pretty solid. Again, it's just the bear, not their unit. But if you put that on a sergeant, this one I like on a sergeant because yes. they normally have extra attacks. But maybe a sergeant with two lightning claws in a terminator unit or unit of Vanguard veterans. That can be a lot of dice and then they reroll the wound and eventually you get some sixes. Yep. Great, uh, great combo with uh, Psalm of Remorseless Persecution. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, every six to wound is two mortal wounds. <sighs> That's what I like. That's the Pretty good solid. stuff right there. Pretty solid. All right, Relic Bears, uh, and this is most of them. Most of them are hits. There's only <laughs> Light of the Emperor, I think. That's a bit of a miss, as well as the uh, Relic Flamer. Even yep. the Relic Flamer's Beast not Pyre. that bad. I think it is Beast Pyre. Yeah. Beast Pyre's not even that bad for the points cost. Huh. All right, so unique units. Uh, as we mentioned, they've got some pretty strong named characters. And they've got a couple of unique data sheets as well. Black Templar is a pretty decent line of, uh, of plastic kits outside of the normal Space Marine line. Uh, you know, certainly more than some of the other chapters like Iron Hands or White Scars. Absolutely. First up, we've got my boy. I, I, I left him for you. Thank you, buddy. I, uh, on Nick's uh, five-day journey to see if he can paint an army in three days, spoiler alert, I did spend that entire time painting one Hellbrecht. And he looks good. He looks good. Very proud. High Marshal Helbrecht, he is a Primaris Chapter Master. His stats are really, really good. Mm -hmm. He has like eight wounds. He has yeah. access to transhuman. He has seven attacks. He has a good combat weapon with a sweet profile. With a good sweet profile, mm -hmm. like an AP four and Assault Doctrine sweet profile. Like, like get out of here, sweet profile. I believe strength six too. Uh, and he also gives out plus one strength to nearby core units. He's not much more than that, to be honest, but uh, that's really all you need. He's cheap, too. He's only 160 at time of recording, and for that, you're getting a really souped-up Chapter Master, which you're going to want anyway with an army that wants as many rerolls as this, yep. with a plus-one strength aura, which, trust me, also is key to taking those chain swords over damage thresholds. Going from Absolutely, strength four to strength yeah. five is a big, big deal. It matters more than you think, and his melee is vicious yeah. he hits hard he really does hard yeah. and he also looks amazing and he has a souped up combi melta like yeah. like just a good combi melta it's all you know four shots up close with the alternate profile it damage you know I, I think damage too yeah 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 he he hits he, he hits, hits pretty good next up we have chaplain grimaldus chaplain grimaldus is uh he's not quite hell worked but uh he's still kind of a boss uh he himself also got the primaris upgrade and uh, when you buy Grimaldus, you get a couple friends for free. Grimaldus does not walk alone. He tags along with a couple of servitors, which help give his unit a very large profile. And while the servitors are alive, hint, he's a character and can't be shot. Uh, but while those servitors are alive, uh, they give him buffs. Yep, so. they uh, let him chant on a 2+, plus. Well, mm -hmm. one of them is alive. Uh, another one gives nearby core units within six inches a, uh, a six-up feel no pain. Yep. And the last one gives core units within six inches the ability to advance D3 plus three, so D6. You know I love that, right? Which, again, you reroll. 
Yeah. So d3 plus 3 rollable means you're basically going minimum 5 on your advances. Yeah. You have an 8 and 9 chance of going at least 5 inches on your advance. Super good value. Absolutely love that for uh, old Chaplain Grimaldis. And that minimum 4 is also really good. Uh, once per game when he dies, on a 4 up he stands back up. He's decent in combat. He's still a primary Space Marine character, so he's, you know, he's not terrible. He's one of the weaker ones yep. in combat, but he'll still bop, just to let you know. Yeah. And he is a Master of Sanctity, and I believe that he only has access to the Black Templar-specific table of chance. But, as we just talked about, those are pretty good, so this is not a downside. Yeah, I don't honestly remember if he only has access to the mm -hmm. Black Templar chance, because I only want him to take the Black Templar chance. Fair enough. So I've never considered doing otherwise. <laughs> uh, he's very solid. He no longer gives up a 12 on Assassinate by himself. No, he does not. Now it is character units, so that last reason to not take him is kind of gone. He's great. Yep. He's uh, he's just real, real good. He's just a very solid walking chaplain. If you're thinking about taking a Primaris chaplain, look at Grimaldus. He's a couple extra points, but you don't have to spend any command points for him to be a good caster and a master of sanctity, and comes with a bunch of other minor buffs. Yep, helps uh, cover the rest of your army in a six up field no pain aura mm -hmm. along with a an apothecary. Yep. And he really helps out Dreadnoughts, because he gives them That's a 6-up Feel No Pain as well. Yeah, that 6-up Feel No Pain he gives, it. it's not to infantry, it's to core. And normally the Apothecary covers that because it buffs infantry, but every once in a while you find a Dreadnought who really likes having a 6-up to ignore. Just makes it a little bit hard to kill them. Uh, Grimaldus loves Dreadnoughts, Dreadnoughts love Grimaldus. Yep, it, it really is just peanut butter and jelly. That's right. All right, uh, the other batch of unique units that they uh, that are notable mm -hmm. are the Primaris Crusader Squad. Yep. Uh, you can take up to 20 models. Uh, if you want to, you can. That is can. a big Space Marine unit. That is a big Space Marine unit to put these buffs on. They are chunky. Yep. You can take 20, not against it. Usually you see 14 because you're looking to maximize the amount of God, I can never remember if it's initiates or neophytes. neophytes. Yep. neophytes. I always get them mixed up in my head. I've had that happen. Initiates for wear power armor. Neophytes multiple don't. editions. Mm -hmm. um, but because I can never, I just never get that straight. I don't know what's what's up with yeah. that. But you usually want to maximize the scouts, and you want to usually because they're they're so cheap for their profile. Mm -hmm. And then you put either a four up invuln on them for one turn, or a five up invuln on them with your vow, and then they're basically the same unit. Pretty good. Or you take a 20 man and just say, yeah, you're not killing this one turn. Yeah. And a Crusader squad and a Primaris Crusader squad is basically a squad that's a mix of Marines and Scouts. So if you take a normal Crusader squad, you can get Tactical Marines, who can replace their bulk on with chain swords, or you can get Scouts. Yes. And if you take a Primaris Crusader squad, you get Intercessors, who can, of course, have an audible rifle or a chain sword, kind of being like an assault or normal Intercessor. And then you can add uh, the Primaris Novitiate which is its own kind of unique thing. Because it's yeah. like a two-wound scout in carapace armor. Still a four-up save, but it's cheap. To get a two-wound marine body, even with only a four-up save, is not that expensive for that. It's only 16 points for a two-wound marine body. And if you start giving it invulns, that armor save may not matter that much. And if someone starts shooting big guns at you, you take it on the four-up armor saves. And if they start shooting little you know, auto guns and las guns at you, take it on the three-up armor saves, because you got a mix of bodies in the unit. You make it a big squad with a blade of wounds for whatever profile you're getting shot by. You give it a bunch of buffs. It hits like a tank. It's hard to kill all at once. And of course, it's a troop unit, so it's objective secured. Yes. Uh, very annoying to try and wrest control of the middle of the board back from a large Primaris Crusader squad. That is absolutely true. Or multiple. Or multiple. Or multiple. No one likes multiple. Yes. Uh, then there's Primaris Sword Brethren. They're actually quite a good data sheet. Mm -hmm. um, they are, their, their shtick is they have a bunch of attacks. Uh, they're a good combat unit. They have access to the Exploding Sixes to hit stratagem. Yep. Uh, and they're unaffected by the current Templar Vows drawback. And the one I really like that with is you get access to cover. Um, yeah. Yeah. They, they know how to take cover while fulfilling their vows. That's pretty important. Very important. Uh, I, I think this is a tremendously strong unit, just kind of lacking points and slots. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit... It's like the Death Company Intercessor out of Blood Angels. A good unit in the wrong slot. If this were a troop, I think you would see it all the time. As it is, you can totally include a unit of Sword Brethren, and I think he'll do good work for you, but you can't really base an army around him. Yeah, that's probably true. Right. Well, speaking of, uh, well, let's talk about secondaries, actually, before we talk about what an army might look like. That's right. So first up is bathe your blade in the blood of your foe. I just want to make my opponent like write that down. 
That's right, yes. They're keeping score during yeah, the game. They write down game. Blade, and you're like, no, no, no. No, 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 no. It's not Blade of Sanguinius. Get out of here with that. It's bathe your blade in the blood of your phone. You just keep insisting until they write it all down. <laughs> so that one's a purged enemy category, something that's pretty good for a secondary because that's often a situational category that you may not have a good choice for. That's right. So it is kind of the standard Space Marine challenge yeah, secondary. We've seen it in a couple of different yeah, places Space now. Wolves have it. Blood Angels have it. I, I, I think It's every, a little different every time. I think they little. standardized them. I think they're all the same oh, now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you pick one of your characters and you pick one of your opponent's characters and you get five points for killing them, five points for killing them in melee, and ten, uh, 15 points for killing them in melee with your chosen character. It's a yes. lot of, uh, you know, teased cross and eyes to dot, but if it pays off, if Helbrick kills Abaddon, boy, is that a lot of points. Oh, yeah, yeah. I. Uh, you got to make it work. Though. I will let them know. If that happens, I'm just, before <laughs> I roll dice, I'm just going to be like, so if you die here, it's 15, right? And they're like, yeah. Yes, it is. Stressful. And then Helbrecht. Because <laughs> that's what he do. That's what he does. That's what he do. All right. So next up is Allow Not the Worship of Unclean Idols. This one's a Battlefield Supremacy. Score two points for each objective that your, oppo your enemy held at the start of your turn that you hold at the end of your turn with a core unit or a chaplain. So you have to take over your opponent's objectives with core or chaplains. Now, that does involve getting to where your opponent is and just killing them and being alive on it. So that does sound like what you want to do. A little tricky though, just because uh, if your opponent never takes those objectives back, because that's your game plan, then you don't actually get that many points on it. No, no. If your opponent, as you said, never takes an objective away from you, you're probably winning, I, I hear you say, but this means that you have to go dive into your opponent's objective, like into their deployment zone to go take their objectives yeah, to away. Keep getting which is one. Very thematic, but uh, may not work out for you in the long run. And also, if you if this is like um, data scry salvage, mm -hmm. where there's a lot of objectives in the center that you take back every turn, this one caps at three per turn. Yep. So you're not really going to be able to make use of the fact that you're taking you know three objectives away from your opponent every turn, because ah, it's only three. Now, still, it's pretty good in that sort of scenario. Maybe in Data Scry Salvage, you would take it. Uh, mm -hmm. But in other ones, maybe the five objective missions like Conversion or Death and Zeal, uh, I would probably not. Fair enough. Finally, we have Carry Out Your Vows in the No Mercy, No Respite category. So you gain four points each turn uh, to a maximum of 12 if you kill more enemies in combat than they killed total. So not you kill more in combat than they kill in right. combat. This is not stomp them good out of orcs. This is stomp them better. You have yeah. to be better. You have to kill more units in combat than they killed, period, including combat, shooting, psychic phase, no matter what. Yeah. Psychic phase at you. Can you no, imagine having a psychic me. phase? Ugh. Yeah, so not bad if you think your opponent has a lot of you know small units and you can go up there and hit them with chain swords effectively. But if they're going to sit back and shoot you a lot, then this objective is a little harder to complete. It is. Now, you do tend to have big, chunky units, mm -hmm. and so this is fairly not, not bad. bad. You only need to do it three grind. times to get the, the four points. That's right. Uh, into something like Dark Eldar, I'd probably take carry out your vows. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of kind of bops. Yeah. Uh, so you go up to 12 that way. So that, that really does help the fact that you don't really kill much on turn one. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to kill anything till turn three. You could still max this even if you don't kill a unit till turn three. That's right. And then you get an additional three points at the end of the game if you fulfill an objective unique to the value sword at the start of the game. Uh, one of them, I believe, has you end up in your opponent's deployment zone with a mm -hmm. full unit. Uh, there's a couple other ones. I'm sure that a pour the witch and destroy the witch tells you to kill witches to get these points. Yeah, there, there'd Sounds be some right. witchy shenaniganry going on. Not for long. Um, so you make sure, if you're going to take carry out your vows, that your vow of choice is one that you can score these yep. three points Just make sure on. it lines up with your game plan. You're That's good right. to go. Yeah, this would be good against like MSU, like um, multiple small units mm -hmm. sort of game plans, uh, like Harlequins, Drukhari. Yeah, it's definitely where I'd like want, I think. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at a sample list. All right, so here we go. This is just a clean, mean battalion. Yep. Starting off, we've got High Marshal Halbrecht, your favorite chapter master, leading his chaplain into battle. Next up, we've got the two chaplains that we talked about, Chaplain Grimaldus and the Primaris Chaplain. And notably, you can uh, take from two different trees by taking two different chaplains. That's, That's what right. we've done here, where the Primaris Chaplain is pulling from the Generic Space Marine Codex, while uh, Chaplain Grimaldus is pulling from the Litanies of the Devout. 
That's right. Uh, the Primaris Chaplain just helps your army get in there faster, get in mm -hmm. there, just make their charges, which is what your army needs to do because it's generally kind of slow. Whereas Chaplain Grimaldus keeps them uh, hale and hearty the entire time and uh, remorselessly per persecuting people. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you definitely want a battalion Black Templars. Troops are one of their stronger uh, choices. Mm -hmm. You have 10 Assault Intercessors ready to fight twice for 2 CP out of the generic Space Marine Stratagems. Uh, the Sergeant has the Fist of Balthus to use that data sheet twice. Yep. So you I, can I love fight it. with the Fist of Balthus. And then for 2 CP at the end of the fight phase, they can catch these hands again. <laughs> uh, definitely a strong choice there. Uh, two bricks of 14 Primaris Crusaders. They did go down in the latest uh, Minotaurum mm -hmm. Field Manual. Uh, they de they have five auto bolt rifle initiates a piece. You can make those chain sword initiates. It's not a big deal. Uh, and then eight chain sword neophytes and a sword brother with a power sword. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Uh, five inceptors with plasma exterminators. So this is probably the last holdout of the plasma scepters at the moment. I think so. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Uh, they have the Crux Obsidian on the Sergeant, along with Champion of the Feast, something you alluded to mm -hmm. earlier, to give the Sergeant plus one attack, weapon skill, whatever, and wound, because with minus one damage, a five of Feel No Pain, and four wounds, the Sergeant is very hard to get rid of. There is a stratagem, one CP, you can advance and count as stationary for shooting. Ah, yes. very good. Very, very solid, or specifically you ignore the assault penalty and you can shoot with pistols, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and then Chaplain Grimaldus makes them advance D3 plus three. This unit is quite fast and it can shoot and it can solve a lot of problems that you might have. Yeah, minimum of 14 inches of movement there. And then if you spend that command point, they're not taking an assault penalty. They'll reroll ones near Helbricht or maybe even they'll reroll all their hits if Helbricht told them to. It's That's pretty right. solid. Very solid. Uh, next up, we've got that primary Apothecary. We talked about how having an annoying sergeant on an Inceptor squad is great if you could bring them back. And you can. Guess what? <laughs> Guess you what? Just you just can. can. Yeah, so uh, the primary Apothecary is going to be real good right there. Five Vanguard Veterans. Uh, oh, is that a Sergeant with two claws in the bones of Mordred? It sure is. Wow, look at sure that. Sure is. Yeah, just a little mortal wound guy right in the middle of that squad, uh, going in with all the claws and chainsaw that they're already packing. Yep. Uh, one guy has a shield in there, mm -hmm. extra points, and just makes them very durable. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, if you take Laz Cannons, that will go on him. If you take Laz Guns, it will go on a regular guy. Totally fine. Sounds good to me. All right, next up, we've got three Eliminators. Uh, I think they're very strong right now after the change in the mm -hmm. Unitorum Field Manual. Uh, their last fusils became free, so they're 75 points. I do love free last Absolutely. fusils. Absolutely, with uh, their Instigator Bolt Carbine, two last fusils, and then you pay an extra 15 points for that Holy Orb mm -hmm. in there. Uh, you, just, you just can throw at any point during the shooting phase, so you can move, shoot with the two last fusils, Instigator yep. Bolt Carbine, move further, Throw the Holy Orb and then charge onto your opponent's objectives, maybe after you've made them objective secured, something like that. Uh, also, if you're not planning on using the Holy Orb, you can step out, fire the last few souls, and move behind a wall. Mm -hmm. That's very strong, so your opponent can't shoot you back. Really good value on that unit. Absolutely. Finally, you can advance with the unit, fire just the Assault Instigator Bolt Carbine, and then make another uh, normal move, and then throw the Holy Orb. Maybe that gets you on an objective, again, with the objective secured. These guys start in the midfield, so on the Recover the Relics, you will get that early game CP, and uh, that is just very strong on them. They're just a really good tool to contest objectives and take them away when you need to. Absolutely, love seeing them. And then finally, got a fire base of five Eradicators with heavy melt rifles and one multi melta. Generally, the Inceptors do not want full rerolls to hit, although sometimes you can give that to them mm -hmm. uh, because you don't want to reroll twos into ones and kill your Inceptors with the overcharged plasma. No, so, you do not. if you have full rerolls to hit, where should it go? On Eradicators. They really like it because they're <laughs> minus one to hit anytime they move. And uh, so, that's pretty strong. You give them reroll hits, you have the Inceptors rerolling ones. And you just lay down some firepower on your opponent. Yeah, it turns out that's, uh, that's pretty good, huh? Pretty good. Pretty Very good. nice. Uh, got some big beefy combat in the center and some shooting to back it up, as well as some buff characters. Vanguard veterans run around like a scalpel and just pick something up that uh, the mm -hmm. rest of your army's a little too slow to get to. And uh, that's the list. Yeah, still uh, really solid. You've got good shooting, you've got a lot of board control, and you've got some great character support here, as well as a lot of those unique Black Templar rules and relics to access to. Give you a little bit of tricks uh, when you're accomplishing your game plan. That's right. This should do well for you in games if you want mm -hmm. to try it out. 
and uh, let us know how it works out for you in the comments section below. Uh, just, you know, join in. Tell us, uh, tell us how handsome we are. <laughs> That's, or how handsome I am. You can say whatever you want about John. I don't care if you lie to him. Yeah, and in that comment section, you know, we appreciate any questions you've got. That's also how we help the YouTube al algorithm. Tell us that we're doing a good job. As always, we appreciate all of the support that you give us. If you like this content, give us a like, maybe share it, and make sure to subscribe. As well, you can become a member of the War Room and our YouTube channel right here. Click the link below, and uh, you can get access to all of our content. So if you like this one, there's a lot more like it. We're doing videos like this for every chapter and army in the game, so make sure you check out your other favorite armies or check out your, your buddy's favorite armies so that you can know what you're going up against. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We appreciate your support. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.